In this lecture, we're going to talk about the double angle and the half angle formulas. So first, let's see what the formulas are. You may want to copy these down as we go through them, or make sure that you have a sheet that has them listed out, as that might be beneficial to you as we're working through examples throughout the lecture. The first double angle formula says that the sine of 2 times theta is equal to 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Next, the cosine of 2 theta equals cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. An alternative version of the previous double angle formula says that the cosine of 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of theta. And another alternative to the double angle formula for cosine says that cosine of 2 theta equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Note that all three of these formulas are going to be equivalent. You can go back and forth between them by applying the Pythagorean identity. And finally, the double angle formula for tangent says that the tangent of 2 theta equals 2 times the tangent of theta divided by 1 minus tangent squared theta. And we'll also go ahead and list out the half angle formulas. First, the sine of alpha over 2 equals the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha divided by 2. The cosine of alpha divided by 2 equals the square root of 1 plus the cosine of alpha, all divided by 2. And the tangent of alpha divided by 2 is going to be the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha divided by 1 plus the cosine of alpha. So let's do an example where we're going to find the exact values for an arbitrary angle using the double angle and half angle formulas. If we're given that the cosine of theta equals negative 3 over 5, on the interval pi over 2 is less than theta is less than pi, so we're in the second quadrant, we want to find the following values. So first, the sine of 2 theta. Second, the cosine of 2 theta. Third, the sine of theta over 2. And fourth, the cosine of theta over 2. So in order to use the double angle formulas or the half angle formulas, it's useful to know both cosine and sine of our angle. So we're going to set up a triangle here to help us figure out what the sine is. If we know that cosine is negative 3 over 5, then we know that the hypotenuse of our triangle is 5, and the adjacent side had a value of 3. So using the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and plugging in what we know, 5 squared would equal 3 squared plus b squared. If we simplify, that gives us 25 equals 9 plus b squared. Subtract 9 from both sides of the equation, we'll get 16 equals b squared. And if we take the square root of both sides, we're going to get that b is equal to 4. So our opposite side will be equal to 4. So if we want to find the sine of theta, sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. So that will give us 4 divided by 5. And the last thing we need to do is figure out what the sine would be, the, the plus or minus sine. So since we're in the second quadrant, we know sine is positive in the second quadrant. So this will be a positive 4 fifths. So now that we know both sine and cosine, let's go ahead and start answering the questions they asked us. The first thing we want to find is the sine of 2 times theta. So we'll use the double angle formula for sine. The sine of 2 theta will equal 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. If we plug in the results from the previous slide, we'll get 2 times 4 fifths times a negative 3 fifths, which will give us a negative 24 over 25. Next, we want to consider the cosine of 2 times theta. So using the double angle formula here, the cosine of 2 times theta will be the cosine squared of theta minus the sine squared of theta. Again, plugging in our values for sine and cosine, we'll get a negative 3 fifths squared minus 4 fifths squared. Simplifying that, we get 9 over 25 minus 16 over 25. And so the cosine of 2 theta will be negative 7 over 25. Next, we're going to look at the sine of theta over 2. Using the half angle formula for sine, we get sine of theta over 2 equals the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta over 2. If we plug in the value for cosine, that'll give us 1 minus a negative 3 fifths divided by 2 under the square root sign. We can simplify the numerator by rewriting 1 as 5 over 5. And then if we do 5 over 5 plus 3 over 5, 
we'll get 8 fifths over 2 under the square root sign. We can think of 8 fifths divided by 2 as 8 fifths divided by 2 over 1. And then we can divide the fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal. So we would have 8 fifths times 1 half. The 8 and the 2 can cancel out giving us 4. So we have the square root of 4 fifths. And then if we take the square root of both the top and the bottom, we get 2 over the square root of 5. Now we don't like to have radicals in our denominator, so we can rationalize by multiplying both the top and bottom by square root of 5. And that'll give us 2 times the square root of 5 over 5. So that'll be the sine of theta over 2. Next, we're going to do cosine of theta over 2. So using the half angle formula for cosine, we'll get cosine of theta over 2 equals the square root of 1 plus cosine of theta over 2. We plug in our given value for cosine, which will give us the square root of 1 minus 3 fifths over 2. We can combine the numerator by rewriting 1 as 5 over 5. And 5 over 5 minus 3 over 5 will leave us with 2 fifths over 2 under the square root sign. We can simplify by dividing the fractions. So if we multiply 2 fifths by 1 half, which is the reciprocal of our denominator, the 2's again will cancel out, giving us the square root of 1 over 5. And if we take the square root of both the numerator and the denominator, we'll get 1 over the square root of 5, which we can rationalize to give us root 5 over 5. For our next example, we want to find the exact value of a trig function using the half angle formula. So we want to find the cosine of 7 pi over 8. Now 7 pi over 8 is not one of the angles on our unit circle, but we should be able to write it in terms of one of the angles on our unit circle using either multiplication or division. So we can rewrite as 7 pi over 8 as 7 pi over 4 divided by 2. And so this is going to have us using the half angle formula. The half angle formula for cosine says cosine of alpha over 2 equals the square root of 1 plus the cosine of alpha divided by 2. And for our problem, alpha is equal to 7 pi over 4. So employing the formula, the cosine of 7 pi over 8 will equal the square root of 1 plus the cosine of 7 pi over 4 divided by 2. Using our unit circle, we see that the cosine of 7 pi over 4 equals the square root of 2 over 2. So we have the square root of 1 plus root 2 over 2 all divided by 2. We'll simplify the numerator by finding a common denominator. So we can rewrite 1 as 2 over 2 and then combine the fractions to give us 2 plus root 2 over 2. And that fraction is still over 2 and all of that is under the square root sign. To divide these fractions out we need to multiply the numerator 2 plus the square root of 2 over 2 by the reciprocal of the denominator which would be 1 over 2. And if we simplify that, we'll have the square root of 2 plus root 2 all over 4. Finally, we can evaluate the square root of the numerator and the square root of our denominator, leaving us with the square root of 2 plus root 2 divided by 2. So the cosine of 7 pi over 8 is the square root of 2 plus root 2 divided by 2. So to finish out this lecture, we're going to do a couple of examples where we establish identities. So our first identity says 4 times the sine of u times the cosine of u times 1 minus 2 sine squared of u should equal the sine of 4u. So we're going to start with the left hand side of our identity 4 sine u cosine u times 1 minus 2 sine squared u. From our list of double angle formulas we can see that 1 minus the sine squared of theta equals cosine of 2 theta. So we can rewrite 1 minus 2 sine squared u as the cosine of 2u, giving us 4 sine u cosine u times the cosine of 2u. We can factor a 2 out of the first term here to give us 2 times 2 sine u cosine u times the cosine of 2u. And again, if we look at our double angle formulas, we'll see that 2 sine theta cosine theta equals the sine of 2 theta. And so we can rewrite the 2 sine u cosine u as the sine of 2u giving us 2 sine 2u cosine 2u. This again matches the formula for the double angle formula for sine. So we can rewrite 2 sine 2u cosine 2u as the sine of 2 times 2u. 
which gives us the sign of for you, and so we have established the identity. So another identity we want to establish is that the cosecant squared of theta over two equals two divided by one plus the cosine of theta. So we're gonna start with the left-hand side, cosecant squared of theta over two, and we're gonna write that as cosecant of theta over two quantity squared, just to make it a little bit easier to deal with. Now from the reciprocal identity, we know that cosecant is one over sine, so the cosecant of theta over two can be written as one over the sine of theta over two, and then quantity is still, squ still squared. We can use the half angle formula for sine now to give us one divided by the square root of one plus cosine theta over two, whole quantity squared. And if we square our quantity, the numerator will give us one, and in the denominator, the square root and the square will cancel out, leaving us with one plus the cosine of theta over two, now remember one over a fraction says take the reciprocal of the fraction. So the reciprocal of one plus cosine theta over two will be two over one plus cosine theta. And so we've established this identity.